how she did not trust her family members who claim, who claim themselves to be religious, and yet their actions were not religious enough. So as I listened to her and expressed my understanding to her struggle, due to my own struggle also with a sister who suffers from mental illness. As I listened, she felt understood, heard, and experienced God's presence as we prayed. Because the chaplain, who is a representative of God, <coughs> understood her and her struggles with her family. We prayed, and the content of the prayer eventually helped her to share with me her preparation <coughs> for the end of her life. Often, I believe, the effect of prayer can be measured according to the degree a patient is healed after prayer. I distinguish these two words, cure and healing. Cure indicates recovery from illness or the restoration of health such as physical or the material cure, restoration. But healing indicates the restoration of the invisible. Often it is the restoration of the mind and spirit in spite of physical ailment. So there are three kinds of evidence for healing after prayer. It is the restoration of the relationship with God, the highest being of the universe. It is the restoration of the relationship with self, possessing a healthy self-image or self-worth, and then it is also the restoration of the relationships with others, such as family members or friends. As people are restored through prayer, they often experience an altered condition. This altered condition means they feel that things got better, either physically, spiritually, or emotionally. They will often exhibit peace of mind, increased trust in God, and increased ability to accept themselves and to accept others. Therefore, prayer is effective in bringing restoration, according to my theology and my living testimony, especially my experience with patients. It may not cure, but it heals as it brings restoration to individual spirituality and their psychology. of uh, prayer in Islam, first we need to understand the characteristic of nature of Islam. Uh, every religion has a power, has a logic. You understand, if you like to understand the Judaism, you need to understand the relationship between God and the nation, or the covenants. Otherwise, you cannot understand the whole picture. And if you like to understand Christianity, you need to understand the incarnation of God through Jesus. Everything uh, circles around this perception, incarnation of God through Jesus. And to understand the place of worship, prayer, or other things in Islam, we need to understand the core or logic of Islam. What is the logic or core of Islam? The core of Islam is the Tawheed, or unity of God. But Tawheed is only to, enough to understand what does it mean to read. 
the unity or oneness of God, or existence of God. And according to Quran or Islam, God, uh, Allah, is in every process. He is intervening in the history. He is intervening in the events, in the history, in everything. And uh, he reveals himself in me, in my heart, or in the universe. If you uh, depict or understand God, we need to, uh, you can look at the universe to understand God himself. Because according to Muslim understanding, the universe, all the universe, are the reflection of the God, godly names. And in Islam, according to my understanding from the Holy Scriptures, from the Bible of Islam, New Testament, and the Quran, God created us human being only to be known. God wanted to be known, and He created us. Why? Because He created us in the image of Himself, as mentioned in the Genesis book. And there is. There is no verse in the Quran similar to this verse, but there is a prophetic saying, Hadith. Hadith says, similar to the Genesis book. <coughs> we, human being, is created in the image of God like that. Or in the universe, there are angels, demons, every other. Uh, entities, only human being, beings can understand God better. Why? Because of his nature. The main focus or nature or uh, core of Islam is the existence of God and he is remembrance by human beings. God wants us to be remembered and to be worshipped. There are two aims of uh, God's comments in the Quran. God's uh, command was uh, five daily prayers were only to be remembered. Because remembrance of God is the main part or core of Islam. God says in the Quran, Velezikrullahi Ekber, the remembrance of God is the greatest. God only used the Ekber, the concept of Ekber for himself. As you know from the Ezans, five daily prayers, Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber, Allah is the greater, Allah is the greater. But he uses this term, the greater, Ekber, for the remembrance of God. Quran says, Zikr, where is Allah Ekber? The remembrance of God is the greatest. This is the core to my understanding of Islam. God wanted to be known, He created us, and He wants to be remembered by us. And if you study the um, prayer, God uses the word dua uh, in the Quran. The numbers of the concepts in the Quran uh, reflects us the importance of this subject. And God uses the prayer or dua in the Quran around 240 times. But half of this uh, number is about the prayer of God. That means the prayer in Islam is the most important thing, like remembrance of God. And God says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ يُجِيرُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي O Prophet Muhammad, say to people, if my servants ask you about me, I am near, and I answer or respond to those who call me. And God wants us to pray to Him. And in 